Right now, though, I want to go to an issue we covered yesterday and is generating a ton of comment, a ton of news coverage around the country. Apotiki, the uh, small uh, eastern Bay of Plenty uh, town that appears almost to be in some kind of lockdown. Following the death or the killing of a gang, mongrel mob um, chapter gang leader in the town on Friday, apparently death by motor vehicle. Someone drove into him. And as police search for the person responsible, a tangi is happening full of, uh, and I'll be brutal in my personal view, uh, false emotionalism and the lionisation of a man who was a criminal and did things that damaged communities and damaged individuals. But um, we live in a weird world where everyone wants to emote and say, yeah, bro, he was a good guy. Well, he wasn't. He was a gang member and criminal. Um, and by the way, I can't defame the dead. But a potiki, a number of schools have closed. Some, it would appear, because they are close to where the tangi for this man will be held. The bus service has been cancelled, but as someone pointed out yesterday, it's not like there are commuter buses running around a potiki all the time and one goes to and from Fakatani a couple of times a week or something. That's cancelled. I think the local library's closed. Parks are closed. And we had texts and messages from people yesterday who were saying a potiki is really on edge and that 100 police may have been committed there. So what is going on? Yesterday the Prime Minister said not his job to get involved in what's happening in a potiki. So whose job is it? And... How can we live in the year 2023 in a country where a town is... In, some have said, and the mayor has denied this, some have said a Portuguese being held to ransom. And I say it does appear from the reports we've got to be like the Badlands. So what should a government do? Well, it's a political issue in an election year and we are joined now by National's Justice Spokesperson, I think I'm right, uh, Paul Goldsmith. List MP. Yeah. Paul, welcome to the platform. It's justice is the portfolio, the shadow portfolio you appear on in relation to this morning. Is that right? Uh, well, yes, although I'm also acting police spokesperson because ah, our police okay. spokesperson Mark Mitchell is uh, overseas, so it's more in that role, I suppose. Yeah. What do you yeah. think of what is happening in Apotiki? And do we have, and I think this is a legitimate question, do we have a real take on what is happening on the ground there? Uh, no, I mean, obviously not in uh, or Portuguese myself. Uh, I suppose I look at it from the, the, the very simple point of view, and we've heard all sorts of comments from the mayor and saying everything's fine, everything's calm, but the reality is that the kids aren't going to school, uh, and the schools are closed, and, and so um, th there's no sort of world in which that is okay, uh, in my opinion view, and, uh, and I think most New Zealanders looking at it will be saying, you know, that will be angry at the thought uh, that, um, that, that that here again, yet again, there is another reason why um, uh, the place gets shut down and the kids don't go to school, uh, because uh, now it's, uh, um, you know, gang tensions, and, and that, that indicates to me uh, that, that, that there's a kind of a complete breakdown of the, uh, the way things should operate, uh, and the question arises, well, who's actually in charge of a is it, is, it, is it the law-abiding citizens supported by the police, or is it uh, the gangs? And it's hard not to conclude, if the, if, if, if the, the schools aren't uh, able to operate, that it's not the law-abiding citizens who are in charge. Mm. Paul, would you agree, though, in terms of a health and safety issue, if there is risk, school boards are doing the right thing in closing schools? Well, I mean, I, th I, th I think we're getting into a very strange territory. If, if yeah, I'd agree it's board. strange, but would you agree that there's an obligation on school boards and, and managers and principals of schools to keep their students safe? And if they can't guarantee, because of the proximity of a large gang gathering nearby, if they can't guarantee the safety of their students, it is prudent to close a school, whether or not you well, like the reasons for doing so. Uh, well, look at... Uh, it, it, all the uh, commentary I've heard is saying that the, that uh, there's tension out there, but the, the police coming down, they should be maintaining public order, uh, and people should be able to go about their normal, um, uh, you know, their normal lives. And so, no, I, I don't agree that, that that people should be deciding to shut down schools. For, you know, some of them for a week, it seems, or for the rest of the week. Uh, for goodness sake, uh, um, you know, it doesn't. People can't get, sort of get on with their lives and you can't have an education if a school is closed for a week uh, because of a law and order type issue. Yeah. Um, 
Have you ever been to a pokey? I've uh, been through it. Through it, never stop. <laughs> yeah, well, I probably have. Stop you spend much time on times. the East Cape, at, you know, Tolaga Bay. And, oh, well, yes, yes, yes. Well, I've, I mean, I, I do have uh, famously um, uh, yeah, that's right. um, roots, roots in that part of the world. Uh, and, uh, um, you yeah, know, reasonably well. The last time, actually, I was there was for a parliamentary party that came in Ruatoria. And, uh, okay, I found all right. And enjoy that. Do you appreciate <laughs> it is not Main Street, Auckland? It isn't Epsom. It isn't Kelvin, Karori, or Merivale. Uh, yes, but I, I, I don't accept if, if, if the implication is that um, uh, that 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 uh, out in the wild, wilder parts of New Zealand, uh, you should shut down schools for a week because you've got a gang uh, issue. Um, and mm. uh, that shouldn't be the case anywhere in this country. Uh, mm. And uh, look, it's uh, up to the police to to get in there and do the stuff, and they're sending a lot of people down there. And, and the only point I'm making is. Uh, it's 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 emblematic of uh, of a, uh, a sense that we're, we're, we haven't got uh, the gang situation under control, and that's why you know we've been quite clear for, from our point of view that we need to give the police extra tools to deal more effectively with with gangs, um, such as banning gang patches in public and you know giving them uh, dispersal orders. Uh, mm. uh, in fact, fact, police kind of are of escorting, I think. Is it today or tomorrow? Some sort of uh, ride or some sort of gathering of the gang clans in Apotiki. Um, yeah. It all, and apparently they are currently in Apotiki, closing off roads and directing traffic and making sure all the gangs can go around their business without bumping into each other and having any unpleasantness, which seems crazy to me. Well, yeah, I mean uh, that's right. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to. You know, it's, it's not helpful for a politician to, to comment on the detailed decisions that police make. Okay, so you're that. with the Prime Minister on that, that he, no. he shouldn't talk operationally well, about what's going on there? No, well, no, I mean, it shouldn't be second-guessing every single little minor decision, uh, but I think where we can say and should say and, and make and, and certainly make a very strong argument that, that uh, the starting point is that uh, we believe it's the law-abiding citizens uh, supported by the police who should be making decisions about um, uh, how, how our community operates, uh, and and no um, no circumstance should it be the case uh, that kids are missing out from a week of school uh, because of uh, of a gang funeral. Uh, and um, and uh, if that's happening in Portugal, which it is, then something is badly badly out of whack. Uh, and uh, the the day to day decisions that the police are making are, are one thing, but at the overall context. Uh, in which we're operating is the other, and and you know we've been making the case quite strongly. I think that this government, the Labour government, has been um, obviously soft on crime, but also sending very mixed messages when it mm. comes to gangs. Um, every now and again, uh, they'll send uh, Stuart Nash out to talk tough, uh, but at the other uh, uh, half oh, come the time, Kerry Allen you know, tells sitting. him to cut it out, Paul. <laughs> Kerry Allen tells them to cut it out, and then and then they'll give three million bucks to Harry Tam to do some uh, meth yeah. work, and and uh, and so it is it's very a, it's hard totally to reconcile the zero tolerance <laughs> policy with the three million dollars for a very questionable drug rehabilitation program, isn't it? <laughs> Precisely. So it's very muddled, uh, and uh, and then when you when you sort of remember that the only target that they've got in the justice sector is to reduce the prison population by 30 percent irrespective of what's going on in the community and that obviously is is an overriding um uh, and, uh, direction to the justice system which which feeds into a, a into a, a accommodative stance uh, rather than a, um, a a much more uh, rigorous stance which i think is required yeah um, what then would a national government do in its first hundred days to prevent the sort of situation we have in Apotiki today? Well, the first thing we'd do in government is um, drop that overarching goal that the government that's driving everything in, in the justice sector at the moment, which is to reduce the prison population by 30 percent. Okay, how much are you prepared to spend on building new prisons then? Or increasing well, our, our self capacity. The, the prison population has dropped. Uh, it's, it's been one the, the one target that they've actually succeeded in. Uh, near, um, they're yeah. down twenty five percent. So there's plenty of capacity in the prison system okay. right here, right now. Um, okay. We don't have to build new prisons. Um, so we change that, and the, the priority is uh, to keep uh, the public safe and to reduce the number of victims. Okay, so a so policy that, change that, that is that you will run the prison system to capacity. You will not uh, hesitate. 
uh, to incarcerate well, people? Well, well, it, we'll focus on enforcing the law. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we've listed along, um, and you wouldn't necessarily do this in the first 100 days because it's legislation and you've got to think it through the, it should go through proper processes, uh, but would uh, get cracking on it is the extra powers that we're going to give police around, um, uh, around gangs, such as, uh, as I said, the um, banning gang patches. Giving okay, so let, just, let's just go to the banning gang pra- patches, which is a pretty... Um Standard piece of political rhetoric, and indeed, one of yep. my colleagues here at um, at um, the platform has had some experience in trying to do that. Yes. When will you introduce legislation to ban ga- gang patches? Will you do it in the first hundred days in office? And do you have a draft of that legislation? <sighs> Uh, well, um, my colleague Mark Mitchell's uh, responsible for that, and I, I don't exactly. Um, no. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't put an exact date on the introduction. Of course, we we, we introduced a, ga- a ban on gang patches in public places, yeah. uh, and, um, and that was very successful. Uh, has been very successful, uh, and uh, so we would follow the well, logic. Has of it that. been so successful, that given that we have a potiki apparently being held hostage by gangs? And gang well, membership yes. is rising. How is that yes, successful? Yes. Well, it's, it's, been, it's been a step, uh, but in the context of every, everything else the government does, it's not the panacea. But you've got to keep extending it. And, and the point is, it's okay. intimidation. Uh, so uh, would you make... That, so we've got a ban on, on wearing patches in public buildings and stuff and public yes. spaces, publicly owned spaces. Anyone can wear one working down the street. Would you just say a gang having a gang patch is a crime or wearing one is a crime anywhere? Well, 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 yeah, well, uh, in public, uh, you, you can wear you can one in your, in your home, you can do what you like. So as soon out, as you walk uh, onto a public, public street wearing a gang patch, you'll yeah. be committing your law and subject to arrest? Will it be a misdemeanour law or a, uh, a, law you, a, 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 a crime you can go to prison for? That's our policy. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure you'd be down to prison for it, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, crime. And then the, the second thing is the disposal, dispersal orders. The third thing is the um, non uh, association uh, orders as well, so you can, uh, if you're, um, that's another power that the police can have. And then the final thing is uh, warrantless searches for guns uh, for uh, gang members. So if, if, yeah. if the police pull up a car, uh, uh, they're able to search it for uh, illegal weapons. Now, all those things uh, will we'll give, will tilt the balance more in favour of the police to deal with what's a, a very difficult uh, situation because mm. we've had a 66 percent increase in mm. gang membership, so that's so, so yeah. not going right. And gangs, you know, they the birthplace of, of the Mongrel mob is, you know, Waihau Bay. Um, and it was people going down to work in Parua who funded a whole lot of chapters in the Mongrel mob. But is and my understanding today is, um, Paul, that this guy is going to be cremated in Fakatani, which is the nearest crematorium, and that's a black power town, so you have a whole lot of Mongrel mob people. Going to Fakatani, I mean, the potential here is just crazy, and I would agree with you, and I think most New Zealanders do. It would seem our tolerance for these outlaw gangs, which is what they are, um, has led us to a pretty strange cultural place where we were almost accepting of their, well, I don't know, the bad that, you know, you live in the bad lands and communities have to put up with them. Yeah, and everybody hides in their house for a week and the kids are, 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 are hunkered down in the lounge missing out on their schooling uh, um, because um, because of potential problems. Uh, and so that, that, uh, it, it, I suppose it's a, it's a very stark measure of the state of the problems that we face uh, in basic law and order and it's why we need to actually uh, change our approach and get things back on track. All right, would you consider, and I'm getting texts... Just pouring in on this, would you consider a law that says if you are a member of a gang or identified as stuff, such, you get a longer sentence for uh, any crime? Well, <laughs> to make it an aggravating factor uh, is, is a proposal, and, um, yeah, we're, 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 that's definitely something we're uh, considering. I can't announce anything Okay, like what about today, withdrawing all good. government assist, uh, uh, assistance by way of... Uh, subsidies, social welfare benefits, or any other benefits to people who associate with gangs or gang members? Uh, well, yes, uh, that's a broad issue. Uh, uh, if anybody's tempted, uh, let me say this, if anybody's tempted to um, uh, vote for the Greens on law and order uh, front, it, it, I just point out that it is their policy that if you're 
on the run with a warrant out for your arrest that you should still get your benefit. Uh, currently, currently, your benefit is cut if you if you have a warrant out for your your arrest and you're on the run. Uh, the Greens think you should still get your benefit, so that sums up everything you need to know about uh, their attitude. Uh, so uh, we, we cut your benefit if you're, uh, you're under arrest. I, um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think we're proposing to um, um, ban gang members from having benefits, but it's a it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a it's a topic worth considering. Yes. What's next? Yeah. Um, uh, is anyone from the National Party going to go to a potiki to try and get a clearer picture of what's happening on the ground there? Well, we have our candidate, uh, Dharma Fitz, uh, uh, Fitz uh, Patrick, who's um, uh, going to be standing in the seat. Uh, she may well be going. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll You're not sure. On. Okay. You wouldn't consider going there on a fact-finding mission? Uh I'm not sure if I would necessarily help uh, matters. Uh, but, uh, it's, uh, well, you're, 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 you've got you fuck a papa back to that part of the country, don't you, Paul? More, more around the east coast. Uh, okay, than, uh, the it's pretty east close. Side. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, look, I mean, look, we, 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 I mean, I just, uh, you know, we just feel for the ordinary folk of or Port We feel for the kids, uh, and you know, we're conscious of the fact that. Yeah, um, and it is crazy. Our tax dollars are paying for those kids to be educated. It's a vital part of growing up and being successful yeah, well, in life is to get educated. And here we are because yeah. of our fear of a bunch of thugs. A community and, saying no. Know, it, 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 it's also in the context of you know kids uh, uh, having very poor attendance rates. Generally, um, uh, there's been constant strikes. There's uh, one thing after another, and th- th- this I, I just you know my, my blood started to boil when I heard yet another reason why uh, kids won't be going to school, um, yeah. and now it's a, a law yeah. and order one. And look, we're told, it, it, I mean, there have been two arsons as well. Apparently there are going to be another five. The fire sirens yeah. went off in a potiki last night, and apparently 30 or 40 gunshots in the town since Saturday. Goodness me. Yeah, it goes yeah. to show. But have, oh, well. t- it's not being held to ransom, according to the mayor, Paul. No, everything's fine. <laughs> I heard a report yesterday that uh, there was, uh, the town was calm. Well, it's probably calm, but it's sort of calm like like it is in a um, cowboy movie when the, uh, when the main street is silent. It's it's, it's not calm. It's everybody's a uh, cowering. Yeah, um, and uh, that's a it's a very different thing. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. All right. Hey, Paul. I thank you for joining us. Uh, and I don't think any New Zealander is pleased or, or, or feels proud about what is happening in Apotiki, uh right now. I thank you very much indeed for your time. That is Paul Goldsmith, uh, National List MP, spokesperson on Justice Acting, spokesperson on Police. Uh, and if you're in, fr- in Apotiki and you, you want to ring in and say what's going on in your town, you want to be anonymous, of course we will let you be. I understand the fear that exists. But I'm also going to say to the National Party and national politicians who talk about a place like Apodiki, you need to live there. And I don't. I don't understand it. I might have some small insight into those parts of the country. But the fact is, outside our main centres and conurbations, the world is different. And people are afraid of gangs and someone coming around and giving them the bash or invading their home. Um, And civilisation can sometimes be a very, very thin veneer. which has all but been removed in a place like a Pautiki light right now. And I would say this idea of lawlessness that is abroad, um, and it's not about statistics, Andrew Costa, it is about people, how people feel about how safe they are in their society. And boy, I don't think in a, people in a Pautiki, despite the comments of the mayor, uh, do feel safe which is real, really upset. Sean, a potiki resembles, uh, and I get a lot of texts in from there, um, and also from people just commenting, a potiki resembles the town of Tombstone where the bandits ride into town, the women hike up their skirts and run for the hills, and the men close and barricade the shops, peep through the curtains in fear. A potiki needs a wide erp right now, not a costa, who appears to be one of the women hitching his skirts up and running for the hills. Dave, I think that's a little personal of our Commissioner of Police. Uh, Sean, instead of the cops ex- escorting gang scum all over the countryside, how about they escort the kids to school? Uh, wow, Alex, that good text. That hits right to it, right to it. Send in the army, why? Um, Sean, banging, banning gang patches is a highway to nowhere, just like banning MAGA hats. Never mind the principles that we hold uh, dear. Yeah, that's a point. Um, um, 
Sean, if National is serious about wearing a gang patch in a pub in public, a crime, why not, if they want to do that, why not send them to jail? If they need more jails, build them. More blah, blah, blah election drivel, says Aaron, which is why I pushed on, on it. How many gang members? Oh, yes, I'll pay the $25 mis- misdemeanor fine for wearing a gang patch. Fat chance. 